Hi everybody, my name is Jessica and this is my channel Plant Hooker. Now today I brought out my bird's nest fern. Look how pretty he is. Now this guy I've had for about not quite a year but getting close to. Yeah, I had purchased him from uh, a big box grocery store, Sobeys. But I'm trying to think when. It was maybe right after the... Oh, hello, Salubi. Oh, Salubi's making an appearance. Come here! They never met you! This is Salubi. She's... Now you've met everybody in the cudgel. This is Salubi. She actually adopted us. Yeah, I was outside changing the tires from summer to winter and she wandered into the yard because, well, my kids were playing in the yard too and I think maybe that attracted her more. I'm not 100% sure. But it was like I was changing tires and then I heard behind me and there she was. And we adopted her. That was back in 2017. Yeah, so she's been here for a little bit. And she was an older cat when we rescued her. She, I think she was seven then. And she's 13 now. She just turned 13. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> sorry, squirrel. Back to the plant at hand. So I think it was about February when I got him. Now he's also called an Asplenium nidus as well. Uh, and there are about 11 different species of bird nest ferns particularly. This one I think, I can't remember if he was either the Victorian or the Crispy Wave. Not 100% sure because they have different kinds. Like there's kinds that will stick up. There's kinds that'll curl like this. There are kinds that are are like this but they stick up and there's some that look like lettuce but no I really like him they are native to like Southeast Asia Eastern Australia uh, Hawaii the Polynesia area hello when uh, Christmas Island India and Eastern Africa yeah and these guys in the wild, they can get up to six feet, seven inches long. Like that's how wide they'll grow. Like, and they'll keep going wider and wider. Like they'll, like see how this is like this, eventually he'll be down here. And these leaves, some of them can be as wide as two feet. So 60 centimeters or 61, 62 centimeters. So yeah, and they were discovered back in 1753. And I'm not sure if it was exactly around that time that they became part of the cultivar, but that was back when they were discovered. Yeah. Now epiphytic species of fern. They are epiphytic species of fern and what epiphytic means is they like to grow on other plants. So these guys in the wild you'll see them growing off of huge palms in these shady areas and it actually looks like the palm has like two tops when it's only one top and then one of these guys. Love shade so not a high light plant. They do like the shade. Um, like cool facts about these, like, cause they are non-toxic as you can see, because you're smelling it, but do you want to eat it? No, cause Gwen won't eat them. But they have been used in folk medicine for things like asthma, sores, weakness, and halitosis, like bad breath. And the Taiwanese, eat them in stir fries. Uh, Polynesian Island people will take like the fronds like this, like this part here, or let's see, where would be a frond? Oh, no, you're not a frond. 
I know I saw some fronds here early. Ah, here we go. I don't know if it, like, the, this leaf here is like a frond. And, like, they'll eat those with coconut cream and some of the bigger, bigger ones. Like, they'll take the leaves off and wrap food in and, and put them in fires to cook. So. Is a wide, versatile plant. Um, is not an endangered species. However, in Hong Kong, this plant is under protection according to their forest regulations. I'm not 100% sure on the reason behind that, but in Hong Kong, this is a protected species. Now, when it comes to watering, I'll water this guy about once a week. They love to be moist. They don't like to dry out. And I think it's it's a um, moisture meter level six. And another thing about these guys is this is an acid loving plant. They don't like lime in their water. So like uh, chlorine, like city water, or if you have a softener system on your water, these guys don't like that. They like rainwater and filtered water. Um, bottled water might be okay, but then bottled water is also high in minerals, and I'm not 100% sure if these guys would like that. There are some species that do like the bottled water, and then there's some that don't. Like a Venus flytrap doesn't like bottled water because it's got too many minerals in it. it they're like strictly rainwater. Now, when it comes to fertilizer, uh, I'll fertilize them between every one to two months, depending on the time of year. Uh, and I use the Schultz all-purpose. You can use other kinds of all-purpose, and you can use the fertilizer that's strictly for green plants as well. Yeah. Is a very high humidity plant. Loves to be misted. So I'll mist him about every three days. He seems to do fine with that. Loves it. He's perfectly good. Happy. All is well. Now when it comes to ideal temperatures, they enjoy between 15 and 23 degrees Celsius. So if you have a wood stove, he, they don't like it. Because, full disclaimer, this is my second bird's nest fern. My first one, I had that one two years ago, and I learned a lot of mistakes off of that one. Like, I learned about not the lime in the water, so he gets filtered water or rainwater only. Uh, doesn't like wood stoves, so he's currently in my bathroom in a east-facing window. Now, because he likes the shade, like he's not directly in the window, he's to the right. So when the east sun comes up, he gets a lot of that morning light, and then as soon as the sun goes over towards the south, uh, then he's in the shade. And he seems to like that quite well. So far, so good. He's got no complaints. Um, but yeah, their hardiness zone would be like a 10B, and here on Cape Breton, I'm like a 5A, 5B. He's only happy to go outside between July and August. Yeah. Does not like Cape Breton winters. This is a humid, tropical plant. Humidity tropical plant. Yeah. Now, you can repot these every year. Now, the best soils to use for these guys is the tropical cocoa and peat. And when I got him, he was in a four inch pot. And then, I'm trying to remember when I up potted him. I had up potted him not that long after I got him either, now that I'm thinking about it. Because he had no roots coming out the bottom when I got him in the four inch. So I left him in the four inch until. until uh, I think it was maybe two or three months later 
that I up potted him to this five and he seems to be doing well. No roots coming out the bottom. He's doing quite well. He's, he did spread out for sure because when he w went into this he he went and and liked it. Um, very much so. But this soil, I didn't have, tro I have tropical now. I didn't at the time. But this soil is a mixture of all-purpose, orchid bark, and perlite. And he seems to do fine with it. I think because of the orchid bark, he's, he's liking that because it's an epitidix plant. So I think that might be why he's doing well. But regardless, he's happy and I'm happy and I really love this plant. Now when it comes to pest, these guys can be played with mealybugs, spider mites, thrisp, scale, and white fly. But, knock on wood, I've yet to have issues with any of those pests except for soil mites. And, I did the matchstick method and I haven't seen any soil mites in about a week so I think I got them. I'm hoping I got them. I'm not 100% sure. I won't know until possibly the next watering because I didn't see any the last time I watered him so I thought all was well. So I'm hoping all is well. Now, some of the common problems with these guys are, of course, a rotting base, and that's due to overwatering, and getting too much water. I don't know if I can show that part of him. See, right in there, that's where, where the fronds come from. That part, you, you really can't get that part too, too wet. Because mine, I had, oh, I also had put water in there without realizing. And I'd seen that some of the new growths, the new fronds were rotting. And I went to like them out and I ended up taking the whole middle out. And then it just went downhill from there. Uh, uh, yellowing leaves is a sign of overwatering as well. Uh, but if you're underwatering, you'll get brown tips. Now, I had underwatered him, and that's why those tips there are brown, and there's a little bit of brown. But if it's tips are browning and the leaves are turning yellow, then it is overwatering. But other than that, they are a dandy plant. Would I recommend them for first time plant owners? I would have to say no. Most, and that's mostly because of the the lime in the water and the, how they are with dry, humid air, like the temperatures that they enjoy. I think that would be... Because once, once I learned from my mistakes with the first one, and then I seen this guy, because the first one I got that one on, on lime, and once I seen this guy, and I knew how to properly take care of him, then everything was all well. Okay, so I'd say not a beginner's plant, but like the level up from beginner plant people. Uh. So if you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't enjoy the video, you can give me a thumbs down. Everybody has a right to their opinion. But if you really liked the video, subscribe. And as always, live long, plant on.